All right. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna first make sure that there's people here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can people hear me? All right. Well, thank you all, everybody who's uh, tuning in right now. This is a brand new weekly series, Ask an Athlete Ambassador Live. My name is Lauren Lubin April. I am the Senior Director of Community Impact at the Women's Sports Foundation and your host. You know, sports may be on pause right now, but here at the Women's Sports Foundation, we keep playing. And each and every week, I will be talking to some of the greatest female athletes in the world and featuring some of our amazing WSF community partners who have pre-prepared questions for these amazing athletes each week. And I'm just so excited. I could not kick off this series with a more perfect athlete, especially because today is April Fool's Day and she's a little bit mischievous. She is one of my favorite people, a household name, an internet sensation, one of the greatest and most recognizable gymnasts, a two-time NCAA national champ, a poet, an artist, a fashionista, and an overall 10 out of 10 human being. Get excited, y'all. It is Caitlin Ohashi. So give me a second. I'm going to ping Caitlin in right now. One sec. Hello. Yay! We got it. <laughs> we got it. What's up, Caitlin? Hi. Shoot. Just, you know, out here enjoying the balcony and being quarantined. How about you? I, I'm enjoying my 800 square foot New York City apartment. So <laughs> I'm feeling you, girl. I'm feeling you. <laughs> I, can I can imagine. I'm like, New York is asking for it like everyone's on top of each other how could you not well let me just put it this way i went from running training and competing in marathons to 200 square foot little um living room with a two foot patch of of rug that that's my workout area so okay got that okay. going on. but i yes. got it going i got it going exactly that's perfect that's all you need so how are you holding up in la are you doing well yes it's uh you know at least some people don't have the fortunate uh, weather that LA has, so yeah. I'm pretty blessed to be to have that. Yeah, you're lucky. We have um a little a little bit of sun today. I'm very grateful. I just like look out my window and do this a lot. I'm like so happy, <laughs> <laughs> so happy to just see sun. Um, yes. Okay. Before we kick things off, I have a burning question for you. What is one thing that you have done in quarantine that you would, would not typically do in normal life? Because I've got a good one. Oh my gosh. What? Huh. I don't know. I get everything that I've been doing, I feel like I typically always do. Like, I'm like, I picked up a guitar. Okay, but on my normal Ooh. day to day, like, it forced me to pick up a guitar because I haven't done that in like years. Yeah. So that's like, that's been what I've been doing. And oh, I oil, I did oil pastels the other day. And I've Ooh. never done oil pastels. But I'm trying to get into like painting and drawing. Okay, what's Are yours? You, um, well, I'm gonna need some major compliments because this weekend I gave myself a haircut. <laughs> yes! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> okay. Yes. That's, that's good. Thank I was, you. I was actually just thinking about that today because I'm like, okay, maybe my hair is fried and like I need to cut it, but I'm like, yeah. I have some scissors. <laughs> I gave and myself I'm like, a haircut. Yeah. Do that's it. so awesome. Yeah. I, I think my that hairdresser be... nearly had a heart attack, but you know, it, it's okay. <laughs> How'd you do the back? I'm curious. Oh, we're not showing the back. It's, it's a mullet. <laughs> we're not showing the back. I'm, I'm on my way to Tiger King right now. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get serious. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how this how this works. Okay, first okay. I'm gonna ask you some fun and sport related questions. Second, we actually have some community a uh, community partner uh, that has pre prepared questions for you. There's some of our uh, local awesome. girls, so they're gonna be That's really so excited cute. about that. Yeah, and then we'll obviously open up to some of our amazing live viewers at home. 
But at the end of all of it, and this is my favorite part, I'm going to challenge you to your favorite in-house activity, okay? Okay. okay. Fitness challenge. So, so just think about it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So to kick things off, and this is actually really cool. I've been following this. You have been working with this Brooklyn gym called Gotham Gymnastics. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's actually really awesome. Yeah. Um, super amazing gym. I actually just got introduced to them like a month or so ago. And they're, yeah, based out in Brooklyn, they decided to bring the whole community together of gymnastics and it's kind of transcended. And they thought it was just going to be like in America maybe. And now it's all over the world. Yeah. Um, it just encourages everyone to come together and do exercises because I know for especially like athletes that are, you know, as soon as we can, we have to get back into the gym and, you yep. know, be almost close to a hundred percent still. And yep. so it's like, how do we stay in shape? And I feel like when we mentally get loose, that's when things also easily slip. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of understanding that we're all in this together. And I think they've done a really, really good job at doing that and just coming together, bringing people, encouraging people and getting active and staying in the game. Yeah, you mentioned something so, um, so interesting, because it's true, especially in sport, but I would have to say gymnastics, right? Everything is about routine, 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 practice, yes. practice, practice. And we'll, we'll get to your routines later in this, because that's, that's a, a whole nother thing. But, um, you know, I, I think per, you stepping up and all of these organizations stepping up and providing ways for, for people, girls, to be able to maintain these routines, especially in something that is not a routine environment that we're living in right now is yeah. is so amazing definitely and what's that hashtag uh quarantines isn't that the hashtag that they're using i'm so bad with hashtags i have no idea <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, may, that was me just trying to be cool okay we can just skip over that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm like so uncool on the <laughs> i tried <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did great. I Thank just you. Did it. <laughs> just say I love it. We're, we're yeah. fine. With it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. So I was actually thinking this morning to the last time we we ran into each other, which was a hotel lobby in Albany, New York, at the Aurora Games. Yes. Oh my gosh. I think Crazy. I was like I like ambushed you. I was like, come on. <laughs> and you were just coming coming back from uh from practice but it's always so good running into you like ucla and it, yeah it's fun yeah so maybe we could get into that really quickly i visited you uh i stopped by ucla practice and at the women's sports foundation we love coach val miss val she's also just such an amazing amazing coach amazing part of the work that we do here but um I sat by a practice and my background is basketball. Okay. Like we were just like, dun, 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 like no fun. You had, it was like a club when I walked into you. Like you had the music pumping, you're all having so much fun. Can you just talk about your practice really quickly? Cause I walked away and I was like, I'm definitely going to be a gymnast after this. Yeah. <laughs> and also speaking of back basketball, you should have helped me out with the train for the NBA All-Star game. <laughs> next, I got you next time. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, yeah, no, practice is always really fun because I feel like it encourages this thing that success can happen while enjoying what you do and loving what you do. And so, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's pumped up all the time because there's days when it's like your 100% is – yeah. not your 100 that it was yesterday and sometimes you know if if there's bad <laughs> energy we're like music off and everything yeah. but um i think miss val does a really good job of just having a lot of fun every single day we come in with a new perspective and we have new challenges and times when we come together and we've learned that our team does best when we come together through struggle yep. and so the way we incorporate that is like these hard but like really good challenges and we also have we split up into team blue and team gold so we have like competitiveness because as Ooh, athletes cool. that's our nature to like yeah. have this drive and competitiveness but i think that helped me a lot because gymnastics you're like is routine it's repetitive and yep. tedious and sometimes it can get 
boring and you know we're doing the same thing over and over but miss val's found ways to incorporate new light in every day's practice which a goes back to the importance of routine that we were discussing but then b the other thing is being able to find that bright light even when things yeah. are challenging which yes. is so today you know yeah. um and being able to you know maybe just put the music on and find that strength through adversity um is so important it definitely is definitely but i wore a suit like a full-blown suit to your practice and i was like and ready to like <laughs> i was ready to get on the high beam and like <laughs> do the thing <laughs> i was like i was pumped up <laughs> you called me a fashionista but i'm like hold up let's talk about your style over oh, here that's that's, that's for something else that's a whole that's a whole nother live live uh episode okay so the first time i met you though and i was so excited i remember it was two octobers ago at the annual uh, the women's sports foundation annual salute to women in sports award gala which we sell this we celebrate our 40th one this year if you can believe it but basically it's like awesome. all these incredible amazing female athletes in the world who are there including you and honestly, like one of the biggest nights in women's sports, what can you just like give me your um, initial takeaway when you were there in that room for the first time? It was, <laughs> it was so much fun because I feel like you guys didn't just incorporate sports. It was kind of about us as all like humans and really like networking and meeting people. So like, I remember getting there and being super nervous that I had a roommate, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. it was so much fun and we just, like super like we just vibed out together and kind of stuck together and then there was there were networking events which actually someone that i met at the networking lunch um has kind of still like stayed in my life oh, and the other day, awesome. it was like during super bowl i went to a plant shop and like randomly ran into her she's like i just moved back from new york so i was like oh it was just cool full circle um and just being able to celebrate women because i feel like sometimes yeah. we slip under the cracks and yep. it hasn't always been celebrated women in, um, in sports. Yep. And so the fact that we could have a night that just really took the time to honor these powerful women that have only encouraged more women to keep going and honestly, hopefully the whole world to keep going. Yeah, it's, I mean, that you, you said it so perfectly, like every, every night or every year that night rolls around and you have you know from our founder billy jean king who is there like this lineage of incredible women to you like killing it and today you know it's incredible to see just in front of you the the history of women in sport and being able to celebrate and recognize how far we've come um, yeah from the from the 40 year you know 40 years when we first started celebrating this to to now but um since I first met you, you have, well, I'm going to flip the screen on this really quickly, but you have literally wowed the world like a million Thanks. times over. And Thanks. I'm going to um, pull up something that you and everybody else who is watching is going to be uh, familiar with. So this next series of, of questions is uh, all about you. All righty. <laughs> Okay, so as we're watching this, first of all, what does it feel like to have your routine absolutely explode on the internet? It's wild. I'm like, sometimes I hate the internet, but in this case, I'm like, hey, it's helped give me a career and um, all types of things. I think it's one of the, like, you can never expect what the internet's going to do. So to know that that happened. And I think my routine the year before went viral with like 80 million views, like super quick, but it got taken yeah. down because of copyrights. And it was gymnastics was in a period where we were kind of in the dark and there, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of positivity within it. And this mm -hmm. year or the last year when this routine went viral, it was like the world was ready to open up and receive like a positive light, um, especially within gymnastics and to see the growth within even college gymnastics. It it's super unreal. Like we sold out after that every stadium we went to or every arena. And, and then not only every meet we went to, but tick, si ticket sales went up for every single college gymnastics um, team. So like super cool to see. And I think that it sheds a light on 
the fact that not only men get views, like men athletes, because that's so programmed into everything. Like, for instance, ESPN versus ESPNW, that isn't on every single cable thing. So I feel like it's just, it's really empowerful to know that it's doing more on a level than just like, oh, it blew up and that's the end of it. Like, this has yep. hopefully encouraged even more women to get started into gymnastics or athletics in general and given women more of a platform to keep utilizing. Yeah. I, I mean, what you said is absolutely on point and it's just that you, you know, you have to see it to be it. Right. I mean, it's, it's what Billy, it's what Billy Jean says. It's what so many people, so many people say, and it's the moment that you have the exposure, there you go, you know, and it is, as we're seeing women having more opportunity to have media coverage, people recognize women's sports are awesome, you know, and yes. it gives an opportunity yes. for this routine that otherwise, if it didn't have an opportunity, would have, would have been missed. And this is the effect, you know, and it's a powerful one to see, listen, for two minutes, your routine ignited the nation and the world. And it was only because you had that opportunity. So it's, it's amazing. Yes. And yeah. I, 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 I stopped it right here because I have a question for you. What is going through your head at this moment? <laughs> like, but, what are you um, doing? I... <laughs> honestly, it's like, okay, the first time I ever did that skill, I remember yeah. I like, I wasn't sure how high I was supposed to be, but like by nature, I'm like up here in the splits. And I remember yeah. coming down like so slow and I just, you could hear me scream throughout the entire gym. I'm like, ah, it's like coming down. <laughs> and then it just like, and then I bounced up and everyone was like, yeah. wait, that was really cool. Do it again <laughs> type of thing. Um, so like, obviously the more and more you do it, like it doesn't hurt, it's not scary. It's like the rest of the routine is way harder than that move, but everyone's like, why doesn't everyone do that? It's like, because it's really not worth anything. Um, it just gives it a little like flair, a little kick to it. So, yeah. um, and it's like funny. You are straight, like, vertical. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just something we, I don't know. We just, we grew up doing that, right? <laughs> Amazing. If you were to take a freeze frame of me in that position, I'd be like this. Like, just. <laughs> well, no, I'm see, that's the thing. Is the we time. still, if you freeze frame any of our photos during flips, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, you need your hands. I'm like, no. <laughs> my eyes used to roll back in my head. And they're like, yeah. okay, you need to see. Like, you need to be spotting. And I'm like, I don't know what my eyes do. I can't help it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so before I open it up, because we have some amazing community partner questions, I just want to I want to get real with you for a second. So we're living in difficult times. You know, people are suffering. We're worried about ourselves. We're worried about our loved ones. Um, and to make matters worse, you know, sometimes that our outlet for athletes like us is sport. You know, that's where we would go. But sports are on hold. And what I love about sports, though, is that it provides an opportunity for us to learn. And it teaches us so much from leadership to wellness, physical, mental. So what are you doing right now that you have learned through sport to help you get through these times? Like for myself you know, I'm doing a lot of physical in-house physical movement just to keep my mind right. You know, are, are you doing anything specific that that's just helping you get through this? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think um, exercise has always been definitely my outlet. And throughout, like, I remember going through a hard time when, like, physical activity was taken away from me when I was 16, when I got injured. Mm -hmm. And so through mm -hmm. that time, it's like, okay, what can I rely on? And through this time we can rely on ourselves because at the end of the day like yeah. we have to be there for ourselves and like trying to figure out like it's so fun like doing different exercises there's a i still haven't tried it yet but i heard it's great and i've been wanting to actually take the classes but they've been doing lives like rumble so i'm definitely Ooh. planning on doing that and like i heard you like actually like drip sweat and it's like a kickboxing like class super fun looks awesome so like trying new different things that it's like obviously we would never try that before and yeah. it also the internet gives us access so like it's based out in california so if you don't live in california now you have access to that um That's and awesome. then on top of that i think 
getting creative. Like I've always wanted to prioritize or I wanted to prioritize creativity this entire year. And now this yeah. really allows us to have stillness within our minds and to like mm -hmm. really take time to discover and learn ourselves. And I think that's something that's really beautiful within this madness. Um, yeah. So I've been writing a lot. I've been, I don't know, sometimes I get like emotionally heavy and it's just mm -hmm. really nice to go outside and write, draw, and just be present with myself. Mm -hmm. And I also love music. So I've been listening to a lot of music. I ordered a bunch of records and have been just like putting those nice. on. Yeah, so. Do you have any recommendations for our viewers? Um, for records? Yeah. Or for any? Um, for any type of music that you're, that you're digging oh, right in. Okay, Earth Gang, super awesome. I love okay. them. And for record, I just got Smino's because, or I mean, yeah, so I just ordered it and it's super cool because his whole entire album's like made to intertwine. And so Ooh, that is cool. it just flows really, really smooth on a record. Who else? The, I, I mean, there's literally so many people. Tom Mish I just got introduced to. There's, there's so many phenomenal artists and they're so like, it, it's like, how do you find so much talent when there's so much talent within the music space? For so real. I like going on YouTube and just like playing my, ty my type of like vibe type in like, I don't even know what would my go-to would be, but then everything just kind of falls. Like Amalu, super awesome. She does this cool EP with her, with this one album that I put on and then it'll just tr trigger a bunch of other ones. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm gonna wait for your album to drop. Um, I'm saying, I'm like, that's another thing. The mu yeah. music, I just had an instrumental going and I was like, hmm, let me freestyle like real yeah. quick and like just try to like play with words. Um, um, and I was like, let me, I let me know. Have to make music. Let yes. me know when your album drops. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the script a little bit. We have some amazing girls from one of our community partners at uh, Kids Gym USA Inc. They are an Atlanta based nonprofit strengthening the physical, mental lifestyles of underserved children and youth through sports of gymnastics. So they're using gymnastics as a way to just engage all their girls. Their coach, That's Brianna awesome. Smith, has submitted questions, four questions from the girls of that organization. So I'm going to hit you up with them. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. All right, here we go. So what do you do to calm your butterflies while you compete? Um, what's that? There's that amazing quote that's like, if you still have butterflies, that means you care. And there's, yeah. um, it's learning to be able to, yeah, like control, right? And I feel like, the beautiful thing about having like butterflies and adrenaline is it can help us, especially in gymnastics. But if you have like wrong technique, it can also make things go like the other way a lot more. Yeah. So like, yep. so if you work on focusing on what you've trained and that you know how to do everything that you've done. So like gymnastics, we do a thousand of the same routines over and over. And when we, when we salute, we have one routine to do. And sometimes mm -hmm. our mind's like, I can't do it, yeah. we've done it yeah. forever. So we yeah. know exactly what we're supposed to do. So it's like training or learning to trust in the process and going back to that, like, all right, it's one and done. And also utilizing every single practice that we have, because sometimes it can be really easy to like be loose and train loose and just like, uh, it doesn't really matter today. And you fall and you fall, but the, those falls add up. And it's like, when you get to that meet, you're like, oh, but I've fallen on this so many times. But if yeah. you have that in your mind, that's like, I can do this on my in my sleep and I make it every single time. That's when it's it's really important to like every day, every turn matters. Yep. So well spoken. Um, next question. What are some things that you had to give up uh, to get to where you are? Good question. Oof. Guys, um, I'm actually writing I'm writing this poem right now about it's like a deer. It's a gymnastics poem and anyways, I talk about like the fact that my whole family, or like not my whole family, part of my family moved. So my dad and two of my oldest brothers, they stayed back in Seattle and my mom and one of my brothers moved to, um, for my training. So it was kind of like, I felt like I split up the whole family. So I would say, honestly, they probably sacrificed more for me in that term, yeah. but I like stopped going to school. So I was homeschooled for four years, which I feel like 
kind of took away it was really hard to get back when I got to college um mm -hmm. and like socialize you know everyone wants to like go and have fun and like party and stuff like that that was never even in, in my head growing up yeah. in yeah. gymnastics so it was like if, if you don't know it you don't care and that was always just kind of how I felt about it um but yeah so I sacrificed like a decent amount and like also like I was in the gym seven hours a day and you give up like food practically like you learn how to really fuel your body properly but I wish I would have learned how to fuel properly more like, or, like sooner because I felt like I didn't know I was just told not to do certain things or not yep. to eat certain things to not to eat dinner and it was like why is that so yeah I kind of like gave up food in the most unhealthy way possible <laughs> and relearning having to yeah, relearn. And yeah yes yeah. because I looked yeah. at food like it was the enemy and then yeah. I got to college and had a nutritionist and it's like oh food's not bad it's how you fuel and understanding your body is really truly your temple so yeah. it's our gas yeah Ooh, our bodies are temple that's gonna be our motto moving on okay uh so two more questions what is your routine the night before a big competition? Um, eat pizza. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we said the body's a temple. <laughs> um, shoot. I mean, it, it changed when I went to college. Like, typically, we would do, like, little fun things to get our minds off the competition. So, like, yeah. we'd have our team gold, blue, and challenges. We would be like, what's that game where you get the sticks out? they're all stacked jenga? You have to like, yes we will play yeah. like jenga things like that yeah. where it's like it's understand with that game you learn how to control butterflies because you oh, can't yeah. be shaking over there with the <laughs> <laughs> with jenga so like that was a really good one we would do speaking engagements so we would be like working the day before on an essay that we had to do for the team challenge and getting our mind off of what we had to do the next day in a sense but still creating that competitive atmosphere and learning stuff out of it. Because when I went to college, I could not speak for the life of me. Like public speaking was not a thing. Like I would get two words out and then start laughing for the next 10 minutes. And so I learned, I learned how to do that strictly because of what I would do the night before a competition. And I don't really believe in like rituals or like things like that. I try not to get into habits. It's yeah. just kind of like, all right, gets good a good night rest to sleep my mom used to always tell me you are what you eat the day before so focusing on fuel and getting sleep sometimes visualizing always helps and I would sometimes do that laying in bed and then just listening to music nice all right one one final question I've got a nice glow coming in right now yeah I'm gonna, look at that. To, I'm gonna switch to my sunglasses here how about that okay here we go <laughs> okay if you could play one other sport what would that be okay that, after, <laughs> after playing basketball that was pretty yeah fun. that's like, what i was hoping I mean, for <laughs> and it's so crazy <laughs> it's so crazy because gymnastics you don't need hand-eye coordination so like learning yeah. how to dribble was not easy for me yeah. at all but um it was just cool because i i also have never done another sport in my entire life but I always say, like, if I were to actually truly do something, it would be dance. Um, just because I feel like my, my body is, like, not very tall. I could, do, I could do soccer, too. But I remember in third grade, I did soccer, and I kept getting hit in the face with a soccer ball. So by the third time, I was like, okay, this is a little rough for recent yeah, too activities. Much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Awesome. Okay, well, we have... One question that came in from our viewer, and if you're a viewer at home, we're going to take one more, so submit it in because it's, you're going to be the winning ticket. But one of, the, one of our live viewers said, what is the hardest skill you have done? Oh, my. Okay. It's like gymnastics has its own little lingo, so it's going to be hard to understand, but Ono's in Heelys. So, like, an Ono goes from front giant on bars, and you have yep. to – like literally rotate 360 degrees on one arm and plant into like this really unnatural shoulder form uh that mm -mm. was it is a oh no no that was in heel that's a heely and then the mm -hmm. oh no goes from the weird grip pick up your arm hit your leg another 360 to this so that's, that's uh 
Those were my the hardest and the scariest skills I've ever done in my is life. Is it is it called an oh no because that's the only thing you're screaming while doing this <laughs> this move? <laughs> As I'm like falling onto the wall, yeah. I'm like oh no. <laughs> You know what, we're going to call this one an oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I still have a picture of my phone from when I was like training them. And just yeah. like, I came down on the low bar and just my shins were torn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. Okay. I saw one that came in that said, what age did you fall in love with gymnastics? The second I started it. I, like, my mom would always tell me I was doing car wheels in the womb, which probably not true but I was probably doing something crazy um as soon as I got like I started gymnastics when I was three and from there you could not get me out like I would play with toys upside down I would climb up walls at home I would set up our little mini trap tramp and like flip over the couch and just do yeah. the most wild things um so I like really fell in love with it as soon as I started that's awesome yeah I, I that's I think that's how most people fall in love with sports if you have an opportunity to play when you're young it's that it's from the moment that exact yeah. moment and it just it shapes your life okay yeah. well thank you to all the viewers at home for your questions and thank you to our kids gymnastics usa in community partner for questions and caitlin you have been amazing but we're not quite done yet because we're going to my favorite section of this okay this is the fitness challenge so all the viewers at home you get to participate in this as well but the whole premise of this is how this works is I get to challenge you at your favorite home activity okay. that you're doing right now. And everybody else who's participating can see if they can keep up with the one and only Caitlin Ohashi. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to take a very long journey. It is about eight steps from my desk to my living room <laughs> dash workout okay. area. Oh, wait. Okay. My whole place is like. Let's see. Here we go. It's like, so I have enough room. I'm going to see um, over the river. And just like that, here we are. <laughs> okay. Oops. I was like, ah. okay. okay. I don't, this is going to be good enough. I'm going to say. So okay. I'm going to say, sorry, Caitlin, I dropped you. <laughs> um, okay, so for all the viewers at home, too, if you want to submit videos of yourself doing Caitlin's favorite in home activity and routine, you can tag the Women's Sports Foundation, tag Caitlin Ohashi, and use the hashtag WSF Ambassador. All right, so here we go. Okay, I so we're doing this for how long? Activity, by the way. Actually, I'm going to. You know, okay. I've been doing a lot of ab workouts. Okay. So doing core. Are we doing core? Okay. I'm gonna have to move this down. Then. Should I do? Should I do that or should I do like squat? I do a lot of squat jumps too. Oh, please don't put me through that. Let's no, do okay. some core. All right. Okay. Let's see if I can get some like that. Does that help? No, that makes it smaller. I'm like. <laughs> Okay, I'll probably go this way and then, all right, so okay, I'm ready. What I've been doing is we'll start with dip. Can I do like a whole app set? Uh, you take me through. I'm just gonna see if I can keep up. All right, let's do it. We start with we start with 20 crunches and then we go into 20 something else. So it'll be 20 crunches and then these things where you put your feet all the way to the bottom. Crunch up to your knees, down, and make sure your lower back touches the bottom. So first we'll start with 20 crunches, regular. Ready? Ready. And one. So these are just the regular one. Yeah, two, Got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then 20 crunches like this, or 20 sit-ups like this. 20, one, Two, 
and then 20 back to sit-ups. Okay, hold on, I'm moving this. 20 back to sit-ups, okay, here we go. Yep, 21, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 ten, nine, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two. Okay, and then we'll go 20 tuck-ups. Oh my gosh. But, but I actually, I like these ones better where you put your hands down okay. behind you and you lower slowly and you don't let your t feet touch the ground and then you pull back up. Got it. Okay. 20 of those. One. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then we'll just cut this short and do 50 of these little fast. 50, 5, 0. 5, 0. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Yes. What? Oh, Kaylin, do you have like a, uh, like a, Pack? Is that what's happening? I, I I truthfully don't. I feel like I should because I when I got my back injury, I did so much core. But look like, at, look at this face. <laughs> after a certain age, I feel like it's like, can you get abs anymore at a certain age? <laughs> like, oh my god. Well, thank you for the Caitlin Ohashi ab workout. I'm not going to be able to stand for three days, but. <laughs> Really next time, I, next time we do this, you're gonna be a pro at it. I'm gonna be an absolute pro. Next time we're gonna have a little jam session with our guitars. That's the, that's the deal. You play okay? too, Caitlin. You're the best girl. Thanks I miss so much. you. I miss you. Good luck. Be safe. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.